today. We're going to be in Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2 is where we're going to be today in our series called What Matters Most. We've been talking about in the midst of all of the holiday expectations, in the midst of all of the planning and the preparing and all the things and the parties and the decor and the food and the in the midst of everything else, what really matters most in life? Because that's what I want us to focus on. In the midst of everything else, let's focus as people of Jesus on what actually matters most. You know, I read a survey recently by the Lifeway Research Group, which showed that a majority of Americans, in fact, 57%, say that they question every month how they can find more meaning and purpose in life. In fact, 21% of the respondents claim that they ask this question daily. How can I have a life of greater meaning? How can I have a life of higher purpose? And one of the positive things that I believe came as a result of the pandemic is that some of the most empty answers to this question were challenged. Can we really find meaning and purpose in life from material possessions? What we found during the pandemic was material possessions were very low on the meaning and purpose because they did not matter in the grand scheme of things. That no matter if you were incredibly wealthy or incredibly poor, you had the same life circumstances that were right in front of your face. A Pew Research study revealed that over the past four years, listen to this, there was a huge 10% decline in people that mentioned their material well-being when it came to their meaning in life. So in other words, over the past four years, there has been a huge decline in the people that say my meaning in life is inextricably tied to my material well-being in life. I think that's a good trend, but one that we need to see continue more and more because we need to figure out, okay, Josh, what is our ultimate purpose in life? Is it just simply to get through the next day? Is it just to provide food for myself, and my family? What, what is life really all about? What, what is this whole thing all about? And today, we're going to see a story, and I want you to see this. This is, this is the overview for the whole message, okay? I want you to see today how unassuming people are gonna experience an unforgettable message that's going to lead to an uncommon life. Unassuming people that are going to be ex that are going to experience an unforgettable message that's going to lead them to an uncommon life. And so we're going to be in Luke chapter 2 starting there in verse 8 with the account of the shepherds as they hear about a baby that's born in Bethlehem. So read along with me. Luke chapter 2, verse 8 says, In that same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest, what we just sung. And on earth, peace among those with whom he is pleased. And when the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste, found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning the child. 
And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had seen and heard as it was told to them. Now, I want you to see these three elements today, the unassuming people, the unforgettable message, and the uncommon life. So let's start with number one, the unassuming people. The unassuming people in the passage were obviously the shepherds. In that same region, there were shepherds out in the field keeping watch over their flock by night. Shepherds in this time and location were mostly uneducated and unskilled. They were so low in society that they were actually barred from testifying in any court matter because they were seen as unreliable witnesses. They were not at the top of the social uh, ladder. They were not people that had huge power or authority. They were not wealthy people. They were not from a great line of incredible rulers and their last names or the numbers behind their names really had no effect on the whole of the region. All they did was they tended their sheep every day. And because they had to tend their sheep every day, watch this, you realize that day also included the Sabbath day. So they had to work even on the Sabbath day, which made their, uh, uh, their, their uh, place in society even worse. Because the religious leaders were like, you can't work on the Sabbath. You're not allowed to work on the Sabbath. They were like, hey, listen, we have to work on the Sabbath. These sheep have to be tended to. So because they worked seven days a week, they were seen as unclean by the religious leaders of the day because they broke the religious laws. So my, like, listen, like many hardworking people today, they were forgotten by society. They were demoted in importance. They performed repetitive, unattractive tasks every single day. Their life was very common. So their day started as just another mundane day in the life of a shepherd. Nothing significant, nothing epic, nothing of great or grand importance, a simple everyday day. There was nothing different to unassuming people. But listen, their day did not end this way. They were chosen by God to receive and deliver the most important message of all time. The fact that the message came to this group of people is remarkable. In fact, all marketing execs will tell you today that in order to get a message out, you got to have the most influential people possible. You need the Hollywood stars. You need the social media influencers. You need the most popular artists in the world to get out your message because you want people to hear it, right? So go to them. Go to the popular people. Go to the influential people. Go to the powerful people. That's who you've got to go. But that was not what God chose to do. And it wasn't just in this story or in this passage. It was a pattern for God to use unassuming people for incredible things. I mean, think about it. Remember when there was the first king of Israel? The people chose Saul, but God, God wanted another king, right? And so they go through all these lists of all these amazing guys who were no doubt strong and attractive and skilled and educated. But remember, no, hey, none of those are who God has chosen to be the king. Do you have another son? And remember the response in the Old Testament was, well, I got one other son, but he's out tending the sheep. Oh yeah, we, we want to see that son. We want to see him. And so David, he turned from a shepherd boy and became one of the greatest kings that has ever lived. You think about, we studied last week, that God chose Mary and Joseph. Nothing of significance about them 
They were unassuming people, but God chose them to be Jesus' parents on this planet. Think about Jesus. He chose simple, everyday, unassuming fishermen to be his disciples. And so I say all that to say this. Listen to me very clearly today. God has a purpose for your life no matter who you are. No matter what your last name is. No matter what balance you have in your bank account. No matter how much influence you have or don't have. Listen to me. God is in the business of doing amazing things through unassuming people. We think sometimes that we have to vault ourselves up to be someone that we're not. God just wants to use you right where you are. God's not waiting for you to become a social media influencer. God is not waiting for you to get five promotions at work so that you can have enough money in your bank account. No, God's not waiting for that. He says, I have a purpose for you today. I'm not gonna appear with my angels in front of the religious leaders or in front of the politicians or in front of the entertainers. I'm gonna appear through the angels to a group of shepherds who were unassuming people. But those unassuming people that day experience what I'm going to call an unforgettable message. Listen to this, verse 9 says that an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, fear not, for behold, I bring you, watch this, good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior. Remember that word Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. A message came to them in an incredibly unpredictable way. An angel appeared to them at night, and a great light shone around them. It was so unexpected and so bright that they were struck with fear about what it could be. When I think about this passage in Scripture, I don't even know how to picture it in my mind. But the greatest thing that I can think of is that it was something akin to like the northern lights you know what I'm talking about? So in Alaska or different parts up north, you can see these amazing lights that fill the night sky, but obviously it was even more beautiful and bright than that. These shepherds had never seen anything like that. They were fearful because all of a sudden out of the night sky, not only did they see the stars twinkling, but they saw these huge lights. They saw an angel appearing to them. You know, I think so many times we think about angels we think about these cute beings but in scripture a lot of people are scared when they see angels and so there is some indication that maybe they're not so like uh westernized as we have constructed them to look in some of our holiday decor and that kind of thing maybe they were actually scary looking i mean they are the servants of god himself and so they had incredible authority and I don't know that they necessarily had a halo around their head. I hate, I hate to spoil your Christmas, listen, but I just not, I'm not sure if that rendition is accurate, okay? I just want to tell you that. But here's the thing. The angels appeared to them, but it wasn't just about what they saw. It was also about the message that they heard. Because if you saw something great, you would probably not forget that. But the fact that it was coupled with an unforgettable message made it what it actually was, life-changing for these shepherds. And you think about it. It said, I have good news of great joy that's for all the people. What was that? That a Savior had been born. A Savior. You know, I think this, 
People want a rescuer to come and to deliver them, to deliver them from political oppression, to come and deliver them from abusive relationships, to come and deliver them from an unfulfillment in your occupation, to come and deliver them from addictions that you may face. But I want you to hear me today. I am so thankful that Jesus didn't just come to save us from these things. He came to go even deeper. You see, if he would have just come to eradicate the things that I just mentioned, we would still not be right with God. We would still have no hope for eternity. We would still have no purpose in life. We still would have not experienced the forgiveness of God. Jesus came to save people from the source of all of these problems. He came to save them from sin, to grant complete forgiveness, to bring freedom, to reconcile man and God, to change our entire lives. The Savior goes to the deepest point of need, and he meets it completely. He is not like a worldly savior that over promises and under delivers. And this was a message that the angels were delivering to the shepherds. A savior has been born and he is Christ the Lord. He's not another man. He's not just a prophet. He's not just a great teacher. We're talking about the son of God here. You know, a lot of people, they might say, hey, I'm okay with Christmas I'm all right with Jesus. I think he taught some good things. Hey, I'm okay with Jesus. He predicted some things that actually came about. Listen, all of us need to understand that Jesus wasn't just a good teacher or a great moral man. He was the son of God who came to save us, not just from all the surface things that we go to. He came to save us at our deepest point of need. He came to save us not from the symptoms, but from the disease itself, and to wipe us and to wash us clean. There was a multitude of other angels that appeared after delivering this message. You see, in the Greek language, the word for the highest, the highest number word that we find is the word myriad in the Greek language. And it has this connotation of meaning 10,000. Clearly, this was an incredible scene right before their very eyes as these angels were celebrating the birth of Jesus in praise and worship. And the scene, coupled with the message, would forever change the lives of the shepherds. But watch this. This unforgettable message has the power to change all of our lives today. In fact, we should always see our higher purpose in life as tied to the same message that the angels gave to the shepherds on that day. That a Savior has come who is Christ the Lord. That gives us a higher purpose in life. Without that, listen, we don't have a higher purpose. We don't have a greater reason for living. But with that, we have everything that we need to have a higher purpose in life. That message on that day led those disciples to live not a common life, but it changed their lives forever to live an uncommon life. I want you to see it in the text, verse 15. The angels went away from them into heaven. And then the shepherds said to one another, let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, They made known the saying that had been told them concerning the child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had seen and heard as it had been told them. Remember, the shepherds began the the day in the same way that every other day began for them. 
We are unassuming people that are not vaulted in any way in our cultural setting. We're doing the same repetitive, mundane tasks over and over and over again, but then this experience and the message that they heard change their lives forever. And I want you to see what is involved in this uncommon life for the shepherds according to this text. There are two things. Number one, they began to desire Jesus. They began to desire Jesus. I want you to see in the text, you can look back on it, you can study it, the angels never explicitly commanded the shepherds to go see Jesus. Did you notice that? The shepherds were never told, you got to go see Jesus. Now, they do tell him how to recognize him. Hey, when you see him, he's going to be the baby in the manger. Knowing that, that very night, there were probably many babies born, but not many babies born in the manger. Not many babies that were born to Mary and Joseph. So they tell him how to identify the baby, but they never said explicitly, you have to go see him right now, go. But after they hear that message, they start talking to one another immediately. Hey guys, what are we gonna do? Well, uh, we gotta go see the baby. I mean, we have to go. We have to go. Now, obviously their sheep had to be taken care of. So they're like, okay, let's draw straws. Let's figure out who's gonna have to stay behind, how we're gonna organize this, but we're gonna get on it right now. We're not gonna be like, hey, let's decide in the morning what we're gonna do. No, no, no. They said, hey, we're going to get in a hurry to see Jesus. We have to see him. Do you see that? Listen, in our own lives, when we hear the message of the gospel, when we consider everything that Jesus has done for us, we want to grow closer and closer to him. If a believer in Jesus does not desire a closer relationship with Jesus tomorrow than they have today, there is something wrong. I'm just going to tell you that. There's something wrong. You know, we have a lot of people today that fill up church buildings. They sing the songs. They may even give to the church in the offering plate. They're doing the right things. They might take their kids to the VBS or, you know, they might attend this event or that event. But listen to me. When it comes to a personal relationship with Jesus, that's foreign to them. Listen, I want you to know that when you have the unforgettable message of the gospel in your life, you're going to want a closer relationship with Jesus tomorrow than you have today. And the next day, I want to grow closer to Jesus. The next day, I want to grow closer to Jesus. Every single day, we're going to want to be closer and closer to him. We're not going to do, hey, you know what? When I get to this stage in my life, then I'm going to get serious about Jesus. Shepherds didn't do that. Hey, you know, when we, you know, when we have enough people to watch all the sheep, then we're going to do it. You know, when we get older and we can retire, then we're going to go see Jesus. No, they said, we're going to go now. We got to go now. If a Savior has been born, who is Christ the Lord, we got to see him. We got to go. Seeing him, uh, hearing about him is not enough. I feel the same way about our churches today. I, I'll, I'll be very, very plain and honest with you. If all you want to do every week is just hear a message from me or another pastor, listen to me. You are missing the greatest part of the Christian faith. Greatest part of the Christian faith ain't me. It ain't your pastor. It ain't hearing a sermon every Sunday morning. It is you getting up every single morning and say, I want to be closer to Jesus. I'm not just okay about hearing about it. I want to see it for myself. I want to experience it myself. I don't want to just hear other people's testimonies. I want to see it for myself. I want to experience it for myself. 
I don't want to just hear about someone else growing in their faith or someone else sharing their faith or someone else seeing the fruits of the Spirit in their life. I want to see it for myself. I got to get closer to Jesus. When they got to Jesus, when the shepherds got to Jesus, they began to share with Mary and Joseph everything they had seen and heard. Can you imagine this conversation in that barn that night when the shepherds show up, Mary and Joseph? Everybody in the barn had seen an angel at this point, okay? That was a very rare thing. But I want you to see they didn't just desire Jesus for themselves or for the people in that barn. Watch it, what else happened. They not only desired Jesus but shared Jesus. The shepherds started sharing with people, and they were all, the people were all amazed at what was being told to them and possibly who was giving the message. Like, hey, why do these shepherds have this information? <laughs> Shouldn't we hear this from somebody else? How did these guys get an exclusive like, rendition of what was going on? How did they know it first? And all the people were amazed. They were enamored with us, with, with the message, with what they were hearing. But I want you to hear something really important today. You know, we often wonder, hey, if I were to win the lottery, how would that change my life? You ever think about that? How would that change my life? Hundreds of millions of dollars. If I won the lottery, how, how would that change my life? Well, for most of us in the room, I think if we were honest, we would say one of the first things that we would do is quit our job, right? That's, that's one of the first responses that people usually give. If I win the lottery, I'll quit my job tomorrow, you know? That's just what, what people say, right? These shepherds just experienced the most epic event that had ever been seen on this planet they didn't go back and quit their jobs. You know what happened? The text says that they returned, meaning that there was not any change in their occupation. They didn't say, you know what, guys, hey, come here. Listen, we just seen something amazing. No one else has seen this. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to have a tour, okay? We're going to hire a stage company. And we're going to go from city to city, and we're going to share with everybody uh, this amazing, angelic thing that we just saw. We're going to make millions. I mean, we're going to travel the Middle East. I mean, we may explore new areas. I mean, all of this stuff. They didn't go for a money grab. They went exactly back to their jobs that they were doing before. But watch this. They did not live in the same way. They didn't live in the same way even though they had the same jobs because what the text says is they came back with a higher purpose, that the shepherds returned, watch this, glorifying and praising God for all they had seen and heard as it had been told to them. They had a higher purpose from that day on in their life. Even though they were tending the sheep right there, they had seen the Lamb of God that was going to be slain for the sin of the world. They couldn't get over that. I mean, think about every single time they saw a sheep in the field. They were thinking about the sacrifice that Jesus was sent to make for all mankind to remove the sin, to remove the stain, to defeat evil and death once for all. They never got over it. They lived a very uncommon life from that point. But it doesn't mean that they went Hollywood. They went back to their old jobs and they lived differently. Listen, you don't have to find a new job to have an uncommon life. You can find an uncommon life no matter what skill, no matter what occupation, no matter what family, no matter what neighborhood, no matter what bank account, wherever you are, God has a purpose for you there. And your purpose is not just about being good at your job. 
Your purpose is not about just providing for your family. Your purpose is not just about staying in your lane. Your purpose is about glorifying and praising God from everything that you have seen and heard, just like the shepherds. You see, every single one of us has a higher purpose in life. And in this room, in watching or listening to this, we can know this. In the New Testament, we see a group of unassuming people that experienced an unforgettable message that led to an uncommon life. And listen to me, the same thing can happen for every single one of us. Who are we? Unassuming people. But we've received the unforgettable message of the gospel. Good news of great joy that's for all the people that a Savior has come who is Christ the Lord. And it can lead us to live with a higher purpose, an uncommon life. This season, can we focus on that instead of just all the list of things that we need to accomplish? Let's not miss the forest for the trees, right? Let's say, hey, we have been given a higher purpose. Yes, let's do our jobs and let's do them well. But know every single day, there's something greater that God has given us to do while we're on this planet.